And then over to Jeff. Jeff did an amazing uh, tutorial yesterday. We'll get that posted soon. Um, so uh, check out that. But now he's talking about uh, Arturo and Cloud Native Geo. Over to you, Jeff. Yeah. Hello. Can you hear me and see my screen? Yep. yep. You're cool. All good. Let's go into presentation mode. We'll get started. Um, start my timer too. Start our slideshow. Cool. My name is Jeff. I work on the engineering team. Jeff Albrecht. I work on the engineering team at Arturo. Um, and I'm going to be talking to you all about how we're using cloud native geospatial technologies at Arturo. Um, first, to describe a little bit about what Arturo does, um, it's relatively straightforward. We take unstructured, typically raster data uh, from multiple sources. We uh, label all of that data. We have an entire other side of the company that builds um, machine learning models. And then we run these models and we get these structured property characteristics um, that we then can sell to our customers, typically insurance carriers, to help them make better data-driven decisions. Um, the interesting, the, the really cool part about our tour is uh, I, just, I started working here three years ago, and this is what basically our entire product looked like, is you, you had this little dashboard, you could go and type in an address, you could hit submit, and you'd come back with some model results. And then you could do that for another address and another address and another address. And you could submit as many addresses as you want, but you can only ever really look at one address at a time. Um, as the company has matured, we realized that actually our customers want to look at entire portfolios. Looking at one address is nice, but they really care a lot more about, for example, looking at average solar pale damage across potentially tens of millions of addresses across entire countries. Um, and that was a big pivot technologically. Um, this is because um, they typically want to do book monitoring, looking over big areas. They also typically don't just want to look at the latest image. They want to look at um, how did my portfolio change over six months, a year, two years, five years. Um, and this was a huge uh, technological shift. Um, three years ago, we didn't really have a lot of geo going on in our tech stack. Um, and the super fun part working in Arturo uh, since then is we've been basically um, pivoting a lot of our tech stack to work in this new method of operating where we're thinking about the, where the problem we're trying to solve is how can we extract property char characteristics over entire countries instead of individual addresses um, back to back. Um, Cloud Native Geo has been really, really important to, uh, to this sort of technological pivot, um, especially in the way we do data engineering. Um, the first uh, important piece is the multi-source imagery. Um, we take imagery from a lot of different sources, satellite, aerial, stratospheric balloons is my favorite one, super cool data source, um, drones and ground level imagery. Um, and when we're trying to build consistent and deployable analytic pipelines on top of multiple imagery sources, um, it's really difficult because every single imagery provider, of course, has a slightly different way of exposing their coverage data and how you access the imagery. Um, this is where Stack comes in. We love Stack. We love Stack so much. We open sourced our um, internal Stack API that we wrote a while back called Stack Fast API. We use a bunch of other uh, we use a bunch of, of other libraries in the Stack Utils repo, um, and Stack helps us build reliable data pipelines that run across multiple imagery providers without having to build and write custom code every single time we want to integrate with a new imagery provider, um, which has been a pretty, a pretty big game changer as we, especially as we expand into other parts of the country um, in the world. Stack ultimately saw, answers this question. Um, this question is super important, not just to Arturo, but any analytics company. If you are trying to do analytics in this space and you can't answer this question well, I don't care what company you work for. I don't care how good your team is. I don't care how good your analytics are. You will not be successful unless you can answer this question um, very well. And that's why Stack is such a great asset for the geospatial community is because it does a really good job answering this question, especially when you're working with multi-source imagery across multiple timescales. The other um, big change we've made is to how we do data sources and syncs. So we use mostly Cloud Optimized GeoTIFF for data sources. Um, COGS, if you can structure them internally in a way that matches your use case, um, they're just about the best way to store and serve um, massive raster tile sets in the cloud. Um, you can serve them back out into like a, into a data pipeline at ludicrous speeds um, if the structure of the cog matches your use case. Um, and you can get really good economies of scale because you can just push imagery into these pipelines so fast. Um, the czar also makes for a great data sync. 
out of all the tile-based formats that were discussed over the past two days, it's one of the only ones that's optimized for both read and write, which makes it a great sync. Um, you can also get incredible compressions with uh, NumCodex, so it's very cheap to store a lot of intermediary data for these data pipelines. Um, and there's a great ecosystem of ZAR tooling that just makes it super interoperable and super easy to look at. It's like four lines of Python code, you know, to open a ZAR array and start looking at it in a Jupyter notebook. It's, it's pretty incredible. Um, that was the talk. Pretty short and quick. Um, we've basically pivoted again our entire the way we think about our tech stack from individual addresses to entire countries and stack cog and czar in particular have been very very important to making that switch successful um honorable mention is dask um we're not quite using dask yet but we're playing around with it um just to play just to do some you know post-processing on some of the czar arrays we create um, and I'm hoping it's a bigger part of our tech stack eventually, because um, we're seeing some pretty promising results there. Um, yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jeff. Uh, let's get the screen switched over to Daniel. Um, but yeah, uh, super psyched to see all you've built at Arturo. I think. Uh, yeah.